Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of ETV, Patience of the Saints, and we're going to be talking about the subject, Remember, which is really referring to the Sabbath, God's holy day of rest. For those who may not have a full understanding of what that means, we're going to dive into the Bible, into a reading which kind of explains a little bit about what God's Sabbath rest is all about. All right, and by God's grace, I'll be able to do other videos um, going into the Sabbath and also where they came from and why it was done away with for the most of the Christian world. And we're going to get into that another time, but today we're going to just deal with the Sabbath and the word remember. All right, first we're going to start off with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come to you in prayer. I thank you for your holy Sabbath day that you have given us, Lord, to remember who you are as the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of everything. So please be with us in a special way right now as we dive into this subject. Let not my words, let it not to be my words, but let it be your words, the words from heaven, words of life, words of truth. Please take full control of this, this recording, take full control of my tongue and my mind. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, we're going to get right into it, and we're going to deal with the word remember. And in definition, it is have in or be able to bring to one's mind an awareness of something or someone that has seen, known, or experienced in the past. All right? So basically to bring in remembrance. All right? Now, I'm going to deal with the word memorial as well because we're going to talk about that as we go into the word of God. So the word memorial, it means something, especially a structure established to remind people of a person or an event. So we're going to start by our first scripture reading taken from the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 50, and also 52 to 56. And the word of God says, and behold, there was a man named Joseph, and he was a counselor, all right? And he was actually a member of the, the Jewish Sanhedrin council. And he was a good man and a just, meaning that he was someone that was righteous, someone that believed in God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. So the context of this is Jesus was crucified, he died, and actually he died on the Friday, he rested on the Sabbath, and he rose on the first day, which we, which is commonly known as Sunday. So now this is what happens in verse, in verse 53. And he took it down, talking about Jesus' body, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher or sepulcher. And actually the word sepulcher means a memorial or a grave, a tomb. And this is where the body of Jesus was, was buried. That was hewn in stone. And we know stone, that word stone also represents Christ. Wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. So the preparation day is the day before the Sabbath or prior to the Sabbath, which, which we call Friday. And verse 55 says, And the woman also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulcher, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandments. And of course, um, these individuals, these Israelites, um, people of God, they were keeping the commandments of God which um, was taken from Exodus. And we're going to read that. And actually the word Sabbath means rest. It means to rest. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, and we're going to see it from the Bible. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The word remember in the, in the Hebrew is zakar, which means to be mindful to recount or to give an account of an event or an experience, to mark, to remember. So that word Sabbath is also like a mark or a sign. 
And we're going to dive into that later on. So remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 4 to 6, deals, dealing with the word remember as well. And it says, and it came to pass as they were much, they were much perplexed thereabouts. This is after the crucifixion of Christ. Beheld two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? And these are angels speaking to the, these um, the disciples. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. And this, the reference was taken from Matthew 16, verse 21 as well. Now, we're going to go into a reading explaining a little bit about the Sabbath from the Zara of Ages, the book, the Zara of Ages, page 283, paragraph 2. And we just want to get a little bit more understanding of what the Sabbath is. We're going to dive into the Bible as well. It says, the Sabbath was not for Israel merely, but for the world. So even in today's world, the Sabbath is for everyone, universal. It has been made known to man in Eden. So it started back in Genesis chapter 1 and also Genesis chapter 2. And like the other precepts of the Decalogue, the Decalogue meaning the Ten Commandments written in stone, written with the finger of God. It is of imperishable obligation. So that means the commandments is imperishable. It, it, it can't be done away with. And we're obligated to keep the law of God, which he wants to write on our minds and our hearts. It says, of that law of which the fourth commandment forms a part, Christ declares, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall, shall in none wise pass from the law. So long as the heavens and the earth endure, the Sabbath will continue as a sign of the creator's power. So what would the Sabbath continue to, to do or to be? It's a sign of the creator's power. So it shows who's in authority. And we're going to get there. And when Eden show and when Eden shall bloom on earth again, so Eden will come to earth again. God's holy rest day will be honored by all beneath the sun. And actually, you can find that in the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, towards the very end of that chapter, where we can see where it says, from one Sabbath to another, the inhabitants of the glorified new earth shall go up to worship before me, saith the Lord. So the Sabbath will continue, not only to, as, as we speak right now, today, but also when God creates the new heavens and a new earth, the Sabbath will continue. So we're going to be, be worshiping every Sabbath, even when God creates all things new. So now it says, this is same Desire of Ages, the book Desire of Ages. And actually this book is so powerful that it's, I believe it's in the Library of Congress. Okay, um, you can look that up for yourself. It says, no other institution which was committed to the Jews tended so fully to distinguish them from surrounding nations as did the Sabbath. So the Sabbath, it distinguished, it distinguished the Jews from the other individuals, from the other nations. It says God designed that its observance should designate them as his worshipers. And when we go into the book of Galatians, we can see that those who are of the faith of Abraham, those who believe in God, we are also in the same faith of Abraham. So we are like spiritual Jews, okay? Not the physical Jews, but in these days, those who believe in God is accounted as righteousness. Those who um, are in the faith of God, believe in Jesus, are grafted in. Almost, it's like a, an adoption into the family of God, into the spiritual Israel, all right? And you can find that in the book of Galatians. And I believe it is in chapter 3, but... You know, you can take a look at that on your free time. So it says it was to be a token of their separation from idolatry and their connection with the true God. So the Sabbath connects us with the true God. All right. But in order to keep the Sabbath holy, this is a council. 
men must themselves be holy. So we can't keep the Sabbath if we are not surrendering to God. Okay? Through faith, they must become partakers of the righteousness of Christ. So we can become a partaker of Christ's righteousness by faith. Faith in God. And we need Christ-like faith in these last days. When the command was given to Israel, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord said also to them, ye shall be holy unto me. And that, and we can see that in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 and Exodus 22, verse 31. Only thus could the Sabbath distinguish Israel as the worshipers of God. So the, the Sabbath is also, a, it's, it's a sign of sanctification, dedication to God as his people, as his children. I'm going to read um, another, I'm going to read some very key readings from the book Councils for the Church. And we're going to have some scripture as well um, where we'll be able to see this from God's word. It says, great blessings are enfolded in the observance of the Sabbath. And God desires that the Sabbath day shall be to us a day of joy. So we're supposed to be joyous during the Sabbath. We're supposed to be joyous every day, but especially on God's holy day. We're supposed to have nothing but joy. Lay our burdens at the feet of Christ. It says there was joy at the institution of the Sabbath. God looked with satisfaction upon the work of his hands. All things that he had made, he pronounced very good. And we can see that account in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. And then we can see Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 talking about the institution of the Sabbath right after he created Adam and Eve, the sixth day. And on the seventh, he created another day, a set aside another day for holy use so that God's people will remember who he is. And it says, heaven and earth were filled with rejoicing. The morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And we see that in the book of Job chapter 38, verse 7. The morning stars is also referring to the angels. Though sin has entered the world to mar his perfect work, and we see that in Genesis chapter 3 when sin entered as a serpent beguiled Eve, deceived Eve, and it says, God still gives to us the Sabbath as a witness that one omnipotent, omnipotent means all powerful, that one omnipotent, infinite in goodness and mercy created all things. And that's God, Yahweh. All right. And yet Yeshua is Christ. Our heavenly father desires through the observance of the Sabbath to preserve among men a knowledge of himself. So it's to help us to remember who God is. He desired that the Sabbath shall direct our minds as him, as him, as a true and living God. There's a lot of false gods out there worshiping stone and, and the trees and nature. These are things that are created. There has to be a creator which created these things. Okay? It does not make sense when we are worshiping other things, idols, when there's a living, intelligent being or God that is watching over us and who, who created us. And he did it all because of love. He loves us. He gave his son to die for us because he loves us. So it says, it says he desires that the Sabbath shall direct our minds to him as a true and living God and that through knowing him, we may have life and peace. And how do we know him? How do we get to know God better? By reading the word of God. By, by claiming his promises. By meditating upon his words. Which gives peace, life, and joy. And we have to do it by faith. Okay? It says, and, we, and remember the Bible has enough evidence. We can just look in nature and we can see that there's a creator. Even to the smallest, minutest thing, even atoms and cells and, and looking at a flower, a plant, we can see this, 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 even the cell structures when you look at a magnifying glass, you can see how complex it is because there's a designer, there's a creator. No matter what anyone says, there's a God. There's one true living God. So it says, when the Lord delivered his people Israel from Egypt and, commi and committed to them his law, 
He taught them by the observance of the Sabbath that they were to be distinguished from idolaters. Okay? Idol worship. Worshiping any other, any object or person other than God is an idolater, is an idol. It says, it was this that made the distinction between those who acknowledge the sovereignty of God and those who refuse to accept him as their creator and king. This is what it says in Exodus 31, verse 17 and 16. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So not only the physical Israel, but also the spiritual Israel, those who believe in God. The Lord said, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation for a perpetual covenant, an agreement, a promise. It says, as the Sabbath was the sign that distinguished Israel when they came out of Egypt to enter the earthly Canaan. So it is the sign that now, 2020, that now distinguishes God's people as they come out from the world to enter the heavenly rest. And the earth is about, it's about 6,000 years. And when Jesus comes again the second time, he's going to take his children to heaven and we're going to be there for a thousand years, a thousand years of rest, Sabbath rest, where we're going to look at the records in the book to see why such and such did not make it. And God's going to show us and reveal a lot of things during that thousand year period. And then after the thousand year, God's people in the city of God in New Jerusalem will descend upon earth again. And God's going to wake up the dead. Well, you can find that in the Revelation chapter 21 and 22. We're going to go back to the Sabbath. So... It says, it says the Sabbath is a sign of the relationship. So we have to have a relationship with God. It is a sign of the relationship existing between God and his people. A sign that honors his law. So Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's a relationship, an agreement, a contract. God loves us. He loves everyone. But, but we have to... We have to do our part. He says, if you love me. So if we don't love God, we're not going to keep his commandments. So God will enable us through his power to keep his law. All ten. All ten commandments. It distinguishes between his holy subject and transgressors. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about the sign. It says, from the pillar of cloud, Christ declared concerning the Sabbath. Verily, verily, my Sabbath you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Sanctify means to make holy. And we see that in Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. The Sabbath given to the world as a sign of God as the creator is also the sign of him as the sanctifier. He purifies us. We cannot be purified within our own strength. We are wretched. We are poor, blind, miserable, and naked, according to the Bible, Revelation 3. But only Christ can sanctify us and make us holy as we submit and surrender to his will, to his ways, and let go of our sinful, selfish ways. It says the power that created all things is the power that recreates the soul in his own likeness. So God wanted to recreate us in his image. That's what he's doing with fallen man ever since sin. He is redeeming us. He's recreating our hearts and our minds, okay, to restore us back to the image of God, which we see in um, the book of Genesis chapter 1. It says, to those who keep holy the Sabbath day, it is a sign of sanctification or purification, perfection. True sanctification is harmony with God, oneness with him in character. That's what he wants. And as you look at John chapter 17, you can see that. As it says, it is received through obedience to those principles that are the transcript of his character. The commandments is a transcript of God's character. And the Sabbath is a sign of obedience. He who from the heart obeys the fourth commandments will obey the whole law. He is sanctified through obedience. And we're going to see why obedience to the fourth commandment is being obedient to the whole law of God. We could we have to keep every single commandment by God's grace, by his leading, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But the fourth commandment is, right in the fourth commandment is the sign of God. 
the sign that, that connects God with his people. It's a seal. The sign, seal, or mark is the same, is the same meaning, same word. Okay, the same meaning in the Bible. Sign, seal, and mark. We want to be sealed by the Holy Spirit. The fourth commandment, the Sabbath, is a sign of God's creative work. A sign, let's say a sign or a seal, just like the seal of the United States. It has the, the title of the president. It has a title of the person in charge, which is the president. It has the name, Donald Trump. And also it has the territory, the United States of America. So we see that in the seal. Okay. And so the same thing with the, the law of God, the same thing with the fourth commandment. The seal is found in the fourth commandment. Okay. As we read the commandments. Now in, in Exodus 20 verse, verse 11, we see the seal of God right in that verse. It says, for in six days, the Lord, the Lord is his name. The, in the six days, the Lord made, made means that he's the creator, which is his title. He made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. That's the territory. That's what he controls. So God controls all things. He created all things. And the Sabbath is a seal. It's a sign that God is the omnipotent one, the all powerful one, the true and living God. So we're going to end right there. We can go through so much more, but I'm going to leave that to another video by God's grace. But well, may you stay blessed and by, your, by God's grace, may we remember who the true and living God is. And that's the God of the universe, the God of the Bible, the one that created all things, Yahweh, Yeshua. Okay, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. We thank you. And... And I just pray that you all can do some further study. ETV, Patience of the Saints. God bless.